Okay, guys, welcome to Engineers Academy. Uh, now we are going to discuss this uh, theorems of Pappas and Goldenus. And the theorem of Pappas says that if we revolve a plane curve uh, about an axis for some angle, then uh, that plane curve will make a surface area. And we can find that surface area by using the theorem of Pappas. So let's say if we have this green curve, and if we take uh, some small part of this curve, let's say that small part of this curve is DL. So if we rotate this DL about the about this axis, is, so it will make a surface area, it will make this ring. So if we rotate this small DL, so it will have, it will make a small DA area and that DA area will be, surface area will be equal to uh, this 2 pi r let me write that that will be small da and this will be equal to uh, since this circular ring or circle will have a circumference of 2 pi r so i will write that this is 2 pi r times this dl so that will give us this small surface area of this ring and if we add up all these uh, surface areas from here until here so we will get that uh, total surface area which this uh, whole plane curve will make if we rotate it uh, for 2 pi radians right so this this is 2 this is the angle of rotation so this is 2 pi radians since we have rotated this about 360 degrees and 360 degrees is 2 pi radians so that will give us that small surface area which this dl will make when it is rotated by an angle of 2 pi radians about this axis is now if you want if you want to find this whole area so we have to integrate both sides of this equation so if we integrate this so this will give us the surface area which is made by this total complete arc uh, when rotated about this axis is so that will be equal to 2 pi and we will be left with r dl and now uh, as we know from the centroid topics that uh, r bar times the length this is always equal to r times dl or we can say that r times dl which is seen here in this integration uh, in this equation this is a 2 pi r dl integral so this r dl integral is always equal to the centroid uh, times the length so we can write that this is 2 pi instead of this we can write r bar times l so this is the that surface area so now what does this mean that if a if a plane curve of length l uh, is rotated about an axis is for a 2 pi radians so the surface area will be equal to this thing this is 2 pi r bar l so this is also known as let me uh, Put this so a is equal to if if we uh, rotate this dl for some angle let's say theta radians and that theta radians must be if uh, must be equal to or less than 2 pi right so if if this if we rotate this dl by some angle theta then this surface area will be equal to uh, theta r bar times l and this is known as the first theorem of Pappas and Gouldiness so the first theorem of Pappas and Gouldiness states that the area of surface of revolution the area of surface of revolution equals the product of the length the product of the length generating curve and the distance traveled by the centroid of the curve right so r bar is the centroid of the curve if let's say if this green is the plane curve and its centroid is somewhere here so the theorem of Pappas says that the area of surface of revolution will be equals to the distance traveled by the centroid times the length right so the distance traveled by this uh, by the centroid will be this the theta into r bar so if we rotate this uh, circular r uh, if we rotate the centroid of this uh, plane curve by an angle of 2 pi radians so then uh, the surface area will be equal to 2 pi r bar times l so again the first theorem of Pappas again says that the surface of revolution equals the product of the length uh, which generates the curve and the distance traveled by the centroid of the curve 
right? So the distance traveled by the centroid of the curve is always will be always equal to theta into r bar. So this is the uh, distance traveled by the centroid of that plane curve. And if we multiply, if we take the product of this with the length which generates the surface area, so that will give us the area which 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 will be required. So this is the first theorem of Pappus and Guldiness. And in this formula, uh, again, if we look, so A is the surface area of revolution, theta is the angle of revolution measured in radians. Uh, remember that this theta will always be measured in radians, so that theta will be. Uh, can be less than or equal to 2 pi radians and r bar is the perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution. If this is our axis of revolution, then this is the r bar. This is the perpendicular distance from the centroid to the axis. So this is that r bar. And length, uh, L is equal to length of the generating curve. So remember this formula and we will always apply this A uh, theta r bar L to find the surface area of revolution. Now in the second theorem of Pappus and Guldiness, it says that if we have a small area dA and if we revolve that dA about an axis which does not intersect with this dA, so it will make a volume. So if we have this uh, shaded area, let's say this gray shaded area and if we revolve it about this axis, so it will make this green volume. And we can find that volume by using the uh, second theorem of Pappus and Guldiness, right? So if we have this small dA, then the volume made by this dA will be, so we can write that dV, this will be equal to uh, this 2 pi, if we revolve it by 2 pi radians, uh, 360 degrees, then that will be 2 pi and that will be R times dA. Since this dA is at a distance of R from the axis of revolution. Now, if you want to find this whole volume which is uh, made by this uh, gray area, so we need to integrate this. So if we integrate this, then this 2 pi is uh, constant. So we will take, we will write it like this. So this will give us the total volume. And that is 2 pi the integral of R times dA. And again, from the centroid's topic, we know that r bar times the total area that is equal to r times dA and this gives us uh, uh, from this we can say that the integral of r times dA is equal to r bar times A so we can modify this equation so we can write that the total volume that will be equal to 2 pi and instead of this this is r bar times A. So this gives us the uh, second theorem of Pappus and Guldiness and it says that the, the volume of a body uh, of revolution equals the product of the generating area. So this is the generating area uh, and the distance traveled by the centroid of the area in generating the volume. So just like the first theorem of Pappus and Guldiness that says that the surface area is equal to the length times the distance traveled by the centroid of that length. So again, in the second theorem of Pappus, it says that the, vo the volume made by, a, by an area uh, will be equal to the product of the area, uh, area of revolution, uh, multiplied by the distance traveled by the centroid of that area. So these two uh, theorems are similar to each other. Uh, the equations are very similar. If we write that the surface area is, uh, the, the general equation for the uh, first theorem of Pappus is area equals to theta and theta is in radians and that is r bar times L and for volume, for volume of revolution that is theta r bar and this is area. So the only difference is of length and area and if, if we revolve a, play, uh, a curve about an axis which does not intersect with that curve so that will give us a surface area and that surface area will be equal to the product of the length times the distance traveled by the centroid of that length. And similarly, the volume will be equal to the product of area multiplied by the distance traveled by the centroid of that area. And this is the general equation. So V is the volume of revolution. Theta is the angle of revolution measured in, measured in theta in radians. And theta can be equal to or less than 2 pi radians. R bar is the perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the generating area. And A is the generating area. So A is that area which will generate the volume. 
So this is the, uh, the first theorem of Faber's and Goldiness and the second theorem of Faber's and Goldiness and we will use these two theorems to find the surface area of a curve and the volume generated by a by an area. Now let's solve this uh, example from Hebel statics and the example says that shows that show that the surface area of a sphere a equals to 4 pi r square and its volume is this. So we know that area of a sphere is this, the surface area of a sphere is this and the volume is this and we want to prove it, right? So we will use the first theorem of Pappus and Goldiness and the second theorem of Pappus and Goldiness. So the first theorem of Pappus and Goldiness says that the uh, revolving area will be equal to theta into r bar times L. So we want to prove this surface area. So the surface area will be made by this uh, red arc and the length of this red arc will be half of the circumference. So we can write that the length is 2 pi r divided by 2 and the r is capital. So let me write it capital. So this is 2 pi r divided by 2 r. We can say that this is pi r and it's centroid from the tables. Uh, it's centroid is at a distance of 2 r divided by pi. So we can write that r bar is 2 r divided by pi for this semicircular arc. The r bar is, uh, the centroid is always at a distance of 2 r divided by pi from this base. So we can find that area, surface area, which will be generated by revolving this uh, arc for 2 pi radians. So now if theta is 2 pi radians, if theta is 2 pi radians, if it is revolved uh, for a complete circle, that is 360 degrees, so that theta will be 2 pi radians. So we can write that this is 2 pi and r bar is, we know that that is 2 r divided by pi and the length is pi into r. So as we can see that uh, this will cancel out and this is 2 into 2. So this is 2 into 2 is 4 this pi and this r square so we have that surface area so this is proved from the first theorem of Pappus and Goldiness now uh, using the second theorem of Pappus and Goldiness so the revolving volume which will be generated by this orange uh, surface uh, or we can say that this area uh, so this area will be since we know that uh, the area of a complete circle is pi r square so this will be pi r square divided by 2 since it's the half area and again uh, its centroid is always at a distance of 4 r divided by 3 pi. So this is 4 r divided by 3 pi and we know this from the previous topics or uh, if you people do not know the location of the centroid so you people can use the book table. So let me show that table to you people as well. So this is the table from Hebel statics. So uh, the centroid of a circular arc or a semicircular arc is at a distance of 2 r divided by pi and the centroid of a semicircular area is 4 r divided by 3 pi. So you people can use the table. So r bar is 4 r divided by 3 pi. If by using the second theorem of Pappus and Goldenness, we can say that the revolving volume will be theta into r bar into area. So theta is again 2 pi radians, we will revolve it by 360 degrees, so this is 2 pi and r bar is this which is 4 r divided by 3 pi and into area which is pi r square, pi r square divided by 2. Now this pi will cancel out and this 2 will cancel out, so we will be left with 4 by 3, this pi and r cube so we already know that the volume of a sphere is 4 divided by 3 pi r cube and it is proved from the second theorem of Pappus and goldiness